God's blessings be upon you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It's that time. It's that time. It's that time. All right, come on in, come on in, come on in. All right, there we go. There we go. Good evening to each of you. We are blessed of the Lord, highly favored. We are thankful that you are joining us tonight here at the First Mayfield Church. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Why don't you come on in, share with someone, hit that uh, share button, if you will, if you're on Facebook, as well as on YouTube. Holler out the window, text something, holler, tell somebody something tonight. It's time for Bible study at the First Mayfield Church. Welcome, welcome, one and all. Come on in. I see you coming in. Thank you so very much. Thank you so very much. Come on in. 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 That's right. Come on in. I see you. I see you coming in. And thank you. Thank you. I see uh, our teleconference audience. I'm looking at two different screens. Uh, teleconference audience, Facebook audience, YouTube audience. We're thankful to have you coming in and we're blessed of the Lord, highly favored to have you share with us tonight. This is the First Mayfield Memorial Baptist Church, this otherwise known as FMMBC Charlotte. I am so happy to have you. I serve as senior pastor and teacher of this ministry, D.K. Ferguson, and I am excited about the word of God tonight and thankful that you are joining us. Hit those thumbs up and those hearts as you share tonight. Uh, let me know that you're feeling it and that you are receiving the word of God tonight. So it's a good time to grab your Bible, get your notebook, get your highlighter, get your pen, your pencil, whatever you're going to write with. Uh, and if you don't have that, you can always request a copy of this lesson from our church. I can have a copy of this lesson with you if we should go to another level or to a um, to a series or a part two of this lesson. Thank you for joining us. And it's a blessing that you're here. Um, first of all, thank you to all of our listeners on um, on our teleconference line. I, I want to give you my sincere apologies uh, for any um, mess ups uh, that we have. It, it has become and it is cumbersome to make sure that all the systems work right. But I'm thankful that we have you joining us tonight. And I, I'm sorry, I check my sound. <laughs> I'm thankful that you are joining us and that you do so in such a marvelous way. Listen, there is a, a word tonight I want you to share with us. And I did not, did I put a title to this? No, I did not. I am so very sorry. I've been here trying to get this stuff together and didn't do uh, due diligence uh, to get this together. All right. Um, let's do some typing. Let's see if we can type it in. All right, brothers and sisters, I'm going to do it the best I can. All right, there we go. All right, so tonight's lesson, and, and if you heard a pause, that was me typing. I have to, uh, 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 Sister Chapman, you got to uh, understand, Pastor Mike, look, you, all right. Okay, thank you, Sister First. Um, uh, for those of you who are on a uh, teleconference line, um, your pastor is a little senior, a uh, little senior citizen in the making. All right. So uh, tonight's lesson talks about uh, difficult things that Christians have to learn to love. Uh, that's right. Difficult things Christians have to learn to love. Difficult things that Christians have to learn to love. And it is highly important. It's highly important in this season uh, that we come to an understanding and a realization that there are some things that we'll have to learn to love. Uh, love is the essence and the uh, move of God to show abundance in mercy and uh, to uh, show abundance in mercy to others. Um, it's loving these things. Um, loving these things uh, helps us. It, uh, it, it prospers us. Loving these things doesn't come naturally. I mean, really, um, loving these things does not come naturally, but it is the work 
of the Holy Spirit. It's the work of the Holy Spirit to love things. Yeah, to learn, love things that are difficult to love, not just people. Let me get that tonight. Let me make sure I relay that. It's not just people, but you got to learn to love difficult things. Um, can I say it? I, I'll say it that way. You have to learn to love difficult things uh, that uh, that we'll have to learn to love. Now, I don't think that it's uh, particularly unusual to talk about this tonight because we face an awkward time. And thank those of you who joined us for intercessory prayer on last night. Uh, our prayer, our intercession moment was about the word of God, praying for the word of God to be made known, but also people to realize the, the magnitude of the word of God in their lives. And that's not just for Christians. It's for unsaved, for saved, for saint, saint and sinner. So I don't think it's particularly unusual, nor do I think it's unusual that around uh, this time and around uh, the age that we are, uh, or even that, uh, that I indeed not only needed to start, or I need to start saying this, but actually we have to begin liking some things that God has done for us and that God will do f with us. Why? Why is this necessary? Because sometimes things will change in your life. OK, um, things will change in your life. Um, our son uh, mimics both uh, my wife and I as far as growing up in some things. I, I grew up hating squash. Believe it or not, Sister Diana McCray, I grew up not liking squash. Well, when I was about seven or eight, I didn't like squash. I didn't like okra. Uh, whether it was the slime. Uh, well, of course, at that time, there was only the slimy kind. Uh, I got used to the fried later. Um, and I didn't like those vegetables. And I find it funny that I didn't start out liking to eat my vegetables, but later I began to love them. Yeah. And so my taste changed. I got better at, at what I'm doing. I, 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 matter of fact, matter of fact, to tell the truth tonight, I have not always liked sweet tea. Um, now I have to keep it away from myself now because it is a bad addiction. I mean, a wonderful uh, Southern treat of a uh, of a uh, of a drink of a refreshing drink, uh, sweet tea. But I have to get away from it because it causes some other things to happen. Uh, yeah, that's right, that's right. You all put some in the chat if you have problems with sweet tea too. Um, I have not always liked egg rolls. I have not always liked egg rolls. Uh, now I like egg rolls like I don't like nobody's business. Matter of fact, I'm, I, it's in my mind. Uh, my family and I, we love to go to a particular egg roll place in Castlehane, North Carolina. I believe there's a spirit right now that's saying we need to go see the egg roll lady, Sister Ferguson. That's right. We need to go see the egg roll lady. Have mercy. Um, I, you know, I have not, I, 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 I don't like, I, I don't like some things. Um, that I've been introduced to, but there's still time for me to get used to those things. What are you saying? I'm saying that we grow, we mature, and we change. Uh, stop right there. Just take a take that in. Take that in tonight because it's going to be a part of your lesson. Matter of fact, I might even do a pop quiz before we finish tonight. Um, um, we grow. And I pray that each person that's on this live, either you're listening uh, on the live or you listen to it later. And, and I hope and pray that in your Christian faith, you are growing. I pray that you're growing in, in and within this ministry. Uh, you grow, but I also pray that you mature. We, ought to, we grow, we mature, and we change. And, and that change doesn't just happen uh, just in terms of fruit, in uh, food, uh, Brother Evans, it doesn't just happen with food uh, because our appetite for other things changes as well. We grow in our love for books, for quiet and silence, for responsibility and for a host of other things. In fact, for many, many of these things, we don't just grow to tolerate them. We grow to love them. And while this is the natural course of things, there is something supernatural when we consider the same dynamic for those of us who call ourselves Christians. That's because we aren't, we aren't just changing because we're growing older and 
and, and more mature, we're changing because the Holy Spirit is changing us. It's not just your age. And I want to be sure that I preface that tonight. It's, uh, Sister Gray, it's not your young age. Um, uh, Sister Chapman, it's not just your young age. It's, your, it's the growth that is happening because the Holy Spirit is maturing you. It's changing you. Uh, as he is, there are certain things we as Christians are growing to love. Mm -hmm. Now, the amazing thing about these things in particular is how unnatural they are. Uh, the things I'm going to mention in a few moments, uh, I hope and pray that you'll stay with me just for a few moments. Got your Bibles. I hope you got your Bibles. I hope there's some Bible readers out there, some Bible followers. Stay with me. You're going to see some things. Um, um, there are some amazing things about these things that I'm going to mention in particular, how unnatural they are. They, uh, they, they are things that in the eyes of the world, we ought not to love. We should not love these things. Uh, and here are the three examples. Here are th three examples of things that are difficult things that Christians have to learn to love. Uh, three difficult things that uh, Christians have to learn how to love. All right. Hope you got your Bibles. Uh, are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready out there? Are you ready out there? All right. So that's a good place for you to start hitting. If you're on Facebook, YouTube, uh, go ahead and hit something. Let me know that you're ready to read. You're ready to follow uh, what the lesson is going to give us tonight. Go ahead and tell me that you got, your, uh, you know, say hit your heart, that you're ready with your Bible. Hit your thumbs up that you're ready to hear. Thank you. That gives me a good response. This is still a good call and response evidence here. So there are three, there's some difficult things that Christians have to learn how to love. What are they, Pastor? Well, I'm glad you asked that question. Here's the first thing. The first thing that, that, uh, that Christians have to learn to love that's difficult are our enemies. That's right, our enemies, our enemies, our enemies. There you go, there you go. There go our text crowd. All right, I got them texting too. All right. Um, so it, get, get your Bible real quick. It's right there at the bottom of your screen. Matthew 5, Matthew 5, Matthew 5, verses 43 through 46. I told you it's going to be a Bible story, a Bible narrative. We're going to follow it as best as possible. We're going to rock and roll with this thing because God's going to bless us tonight. Um, uh, Matthew 5, Matthew 5, Matthew 5. Um, Matthew 5, verse 43. Hope that you're there. Uh, King James Version people, I hope you're out there. Um, um, Net Bible people, um, whatever Bible, if you got a digital Bible, I want you to get your Bible. Run to verse 43, and you're going to see these words in the Gospels or in the Gospel uh, that is written for our hearing and reading and learning. Look at verse 43. It says, you have heard that it was said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. Mm -hmm. But I say unto you, love your enemy and pray for those who persecute you so that you may be like your father in heaven since he causes the sun to rise on the evil and the good and sends rain on the righteous and unrighteous. For if you love those who love you, what reward do you have? Even the tax collectors do the same, don't they? Uh-huh. Jesus himself uh, uh, acknowledged how illogical this is. According to him, of course, uh, we will love those who will love us. Mm-hmm. That's a good place. That's a good place to get, catch understanding tonight. That's right. We will love those who will love us. However, um, why do that in that way? Yeah, yeah. Why do that? Everyone does that. And they should. People love you, you love them. But what separates Christians is not their love for those who treat them nicely, but the fact that they have somehow grown to love those who hate them. Oh, yes, yes. You got to love those who hate you. Yeah, hate, yeah, love those who hate you. But, but in this, we also see a model of the gospel that has wrought this change in us 
for this is precisely what God has done and is doing with us. Uh, when we were his enemies, he loved us enough to send us his son to die for us. Now, I'm really, I'm, I'm, Sister James, I'm really not trying to make nobody happy, but I'm just trying to help you see this in the gospel of Matthew chapter 5, verses 43 through 46. It's really no big feat for you to love somebody that's loving you. Yeah, but it's a, it's a big accomplishment to do this difficult thing to love those who hate you. Now, I in no minds and no ways confess that I am super saved and uh, all that holy. Uh, I still have my difficulties, but I, I do my best to love those who hate me. I think I've said it before. Uh, try Jesus, not me, because I still like to fight somewhere down the line. But I want to love those who don't like me. Okay? And, and that's what the gospel is giving us tonight. As his children, we must follow in the example he has given us. And when we follow this example, we exemplify that we're able to do some things that are not uh, that, that, that are not natural to us, that because the spirit is indwelling in me, because I've got his Holy Spirit on the inside of me, because I'm possessed by the power of the Holy Ghost, I'm able to do something that I was not able to do before the indwelling of the spirit. I've got power within me that controls me and that keeps me from, um, uh, uh, from doing things that I should not do. Yeah, yeah. So so he gives us the power to love our enemies. Take time and just just write that in and, and write that in your notes. Uh, he gives me power to love my enemies. Um, that's a difficult thing for some people. You know, you'll say stuff, you'll repeat stuff, you'll uh, look at people cross-eyed, you'll do things and you will resent people and you will hate people in some some veins. You will, yeah, yeah, you, you'll get to that level where you will uh, be, be, um, be, be so, so shaken up by the presence of someone that does not like you, that you have formed or they have formed themselves or aligned themselves as an enemy to you. All right. So that's the first thing. That's the first thing. And it's there on the screen. Um, the, one of the difficult things that uh, we'll have to learn, we have to learn how to love is to love our enemies. You got to love our enemies. All right. So there's a second thing. There's a second thing. We're not going to be uh, too deep tonight. It's uh, I mean, it's right here. The information is right there. It's not that hard. But there's something that, I, that, that these other two pieces are going to be in depth. I mean, it's really a no brainer that God wants us to love our enemies. OK, love our enemies, love uh, senators that are against uh, the movements and the progress of persons who are less fortunate. Love those who don't like you, the people that look the other way when you come down the street, people that don't like to even see your face. Love them anyhow. Treat them fairly. Treat them nicely. Treat them wonderfully. Don't Not, not a, a, a possum grin, as I said on Sunday, but you're giving a natural smile. There's a joy in you when you see them because you're killing them with kindness. You're loving on them in that fashion, all right? So love your enemies. There's a second thing, Sister Drakeford. There's a second thing that where we get in depth tonight. This second thing um, uh, that is difficult for Christians to have to learn how to love is to love discipline. Love discipline. Love discipline. What are you talking about, Pastor? Well, turn over here. Turn over here to Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 12. Still in the Gospels. Still there in the Gospels. What are we going to learn here, Pastor? I mean, I'm having problems already with where you're going with it. Hebrews 12 and 11. Hebrews 12 and 11. All right. When you get there, here's where the ball going to drop. Listen, it says, now all discipline seems painful at the time, not joyful. But later it produces the fruit of peace and righteousness for those trained by it. Okay, stop right there. Um, this helps some of us, but I want to expand on this 
this whole subject matter of discipline. You have to learn to love it. Uh, just as Jesus acknowledged the counterintuitive truth of loving your enemies, so also the writer of Hebrews acknowledges the non-sensual way uh, the Christian should feel about discipline. Uh, by its nature, by its nature, did you read that in verse 11? Uh, and I was reading in the Net Bible, in your King James Version, it says, now no chastening for the present seemeth to be joyous, but grievous. Nevertheless, afterward, it yieldeth the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. All right. So what is that saying, Pastor? What, what is that? What is the meaning of this? I'm glad you say, I'm glad you asked that. It's difficult. It's uncomfortable. It is unnerving to be disciplined. Yeah, stay right there. That's where you need to stay at. Stay right there, Pastor. Uh-huh, yeah, stay right there, Pastor. Okay, I will. It's unnerving to be disciplined. Um, why? Because uh, it's in our human nature to rebel against discipline. Yeah, it's against our nature to, uh, to, to it's, it's against us. We want to be free. We want to have our independence. We want to have our freedom. Uh, matter of fact, uh, one of the arguments that's going on now about gun control is the Second Amendment, which gives us the right to bear arms. And uh, I don't think that's a big issue for those of us in the African-American community, uh, not a big issue, but it is an issue. Uh, to be able to bear arms in this country. And that's wonderful. And I, want, I don't want to take a political plateau on that, but I will say we fight for independence. And when we talk about independence, when limits are set on us, we always talk about freedom and independence. Okay, here I go. So uh, it's difficult when you're disciplined as a Christian. Now, those of you who are part of the First Mayfield Church, FMMBC Charlotte, thank you for being on. Thank you for listening to your pastor. Those who are not members, we're thankful to have you. And Max, actually, uh, since you didn't know it, you're on your way to becoming a member here anyway. So I'm just thankful that you're part of FMMBC Charlotte already. Um, but it it it's it's dis it's it's it's, it's difficult. It's uncomfortable to have someone tell you that you are wrong, that you're not in the right. In order for Christians to grow, to love discipline that comes from the Lord, that is orderly, you've got to grow in understanding um, uh, what this, this whole scripture talks about in Hebrews 12 and 11. I hope you still got your Bible there. I hope you got it open. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. It says, now all discipline seems painful at the time. Um, no, you don't want to be told that you cannot do something. You don't want to be told that there are boundaries and limits to certain, to certain things within the body of Christ, but also within the church. And, and, and I, let me make those two synonymous tonight within the body of Christ. Um, you are not allowed to do certain things. You are not expected to do certain things. That's the limit. But then there are certain things that are required of you. There are certain responsibilities that are required of you. And those responsibilities uh, give you order. Can, can, can I just take, I, I need to take some time. I need to work in, that, in this discipline. You know, brothers and sisters, there are so many of us and I'll say this just for our church, just for our church family. We don't like be, to be told that you can't go but so far. We don't like to be told and, and to be given order, training and order on how things are to be properly done. But now let me remind you, if you're going to bring excellence to God in the house of God, in the family of God, you got to have order. Yes, you do. Go ahead and hit them hearts and thumbs up. And if you can't hit a thumbs up, hit a put a ouch down there. Yeah, put something there. Yeah, let somebody know. Yeah, some of us don't understand. Yeah, and, and I'm not saying this is not my personal preference as far as the order is concerned in church and in the household of faith. 
But there ought to be order if you're going to bring reverence to God. You remember we talked about that. I think we talked about it last week um, that let men see your good works and glorify your father, which is in heaven. That scripture and see by being in order, you show you, you show how orderly you are. That's not just about giving. It's also about responding uh, to to training and teaching. When you've been taught a proper way to do things, follow that proper way. Hello, somebody. I mean, we, we, we've read this scripture and we're, going, we're dissecting it, but that first A clause of verse 11 says, all discipline seems painful at the time. Some of us don't, I mean, we want to assume that we know what we know. So, Sister Drakeford, you ought, to, you ought to help usher them in. Help usher them in. That's right. Um, 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 there, there are people who think they know already. And when you come into proper order, God blesses your proper order. My pastor was just responding. We were just talking this past weekend. And um, we were talking about, and I, I say I shared this, and I think I've shared this with you all by doing a live or a podcast with some of my sons in ministry, whom those persons who are in ministry, whom I mentor and tutor, um, there's a proper order that you've got to come under. And my pastor and I were talking about it. If you serve well under your pastor, it's no problem when you're called to go somewhere else to, to do something and you'll be served. Um, let me try that again for those of us who are not preachers on this live. Uh, for pastors who are not pastors on this line, uh, for those of us who are members on this line, you have to work in your proper area first before you get elevated to something else. Yeah. And it's sometimes it's painful to be told that you are not doing it to the level and to the excellence that you need to do it in. Some people don't like to be told that they, they're doing wrong. Some people don't like to be corrected. Some people don't that no, no, Sister Burris, they don't like to be told that they are they're not in proper order. You are not in proper order when you are doing things and and you uh, are judging it and saying, Well, I do my best. No, it's not about your best, it's about the best you do for God. And the thing is, it's it's how it is in cohesion in the house of God to bring glory to God. All right. It does is not disorderly. It does not disrupt anyone else. It does not mess up the the flow. And you are and you ought to listen. That's right. That's what I said. You ought to listen to leadership, and leadership has to learn to follow before they can lead. Yes, yes, that's right. That's right. So if if you read chapter twelve of Hebrews verse eleven, you see the reason why it's because the Lord's willingness to discipline us as His children is one of the reasons that we know He loves us. All right, if that's too complex for you, I'll try it this way. This gonna hurt me more than it's going to hurt you. Some of y'all, do you all remember that? You remember your mama or your daddy or someone of a guardian or a parent saying that this going to hurt me than more than it's going to hurt you because I have to dis I have to give you a beating. And we never understood why it was hurting them so because we were feeling the physical pain from all of that, from the belt, the fly swatter, the switch, uh, the bush, whatever it was. Yeah, we, we yeah, we felt it. We, we felt the ramifications of the of the swinging of the whatever it was. However, it was hurting them because they love us so much. They did not want to have to correct us, but they had to do it in order to keep us from doing anything else that would uh, be in the wrong. Listen, brothers and sisters, I hate to do it. I hate to have to do it sometimes, I have to discipline, I have to tell people, oh, 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 and I have to do it in a better, uh, in a better way because so many of us live in a negative world. Uh, we bring that negative mentality in the church and we want to see someone disciplined in public. We want them see. We want them embarrassed. We want them humiliated. And then that's how we respond to other people. We we respond with humiliation, with uh, derogatory comments, with no, you know you're wrong, and this that. And we like to get loud about it. We like to have everyone sharing. But therefore, you got to learn 
how to be disciplined in the right way and how to love the discipline of the Lord because it is evidence that as his children, God is not going to embarrass us. Come on, come on, there you go. Go ahead and hear the heart, hear the heart right. God's not gonna embarrass us. God's not gonna make us look stupid or look funny or look or, or be, uh, be put in a bad light. He's gonna correct us in such a way that it's going to be effective, not only for how it looks, but how it feels to us. But now uh, in retrospect, uh, it's going to be painful to be disciplined. I thought I was doing right. No, you won't doing right. But hey, good. It's a good time for a learning moment, for a teachable moment. Let's try. Let's try. Let's try. Let's try this this uh, this B clause of the of the text. It says, "But later, you, you see that? Yeah. It's 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 uh yeah, uh now no chastening for the present seeming to be joyous." but it's grievous. That's King James. Nevertheless, afterward, what does it do? It yieldeth. That's that Elizabethan English. It yieldeth the peaceable fruit of righteousness. So um, I'll try this again. Um, it's going to yield when you are corrected, when you are disciplined, it's going to produce the fruit of peace. So if you are corrected, it shouldn't throw you off. It shouldn't have you flying off. Talking, I'm going to quit. I ain't going to be a part of this. He ain't going to talk to me like that. The pastor don't know. Uh, no, uh-uh, no. It's going to help you because you're exercising your training. You're being trained. You're receiving training to be better. And that helps you to mature. It helps you to grow. You got to learn to love the discipline of the Lord because it is evidence that we are his true children when we accept discipline. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Accept discipline in your life. That's right. That's right. Accept discipline. Uh, somebody ought to accept it. You, ought, I mean, think about it. You appreciated those beatings that you got. I, did I say beatings? I'm sorry. Uh, you accept, you appreciate those uh, parents and persons who gave you that corrective action. All right. I'm trying to use big words tonight, Sister Burris. I'm trying to help you. Yeah. Uh, when you receive corrective action in the household of faith, it helps you to become a better Christian. It helps you to learn better. Uh, old, uh, the old church, matter of fact, my first church had Deacon there, uh, Deacon Rayford Bat, still living today. He said, when you learn better, you do better. Because when you know better, you, you'll do better. That's right. Knowledge will help you to grow. And and you you can't you, you, when you receive knowledge, you got to have that understanding. Now, not all all of us have the same learning level. But at least we can learn and learn to be disciplined by God and God's uh leadership in place. All right. So so I told you uh there are three things. I, I did I tell you that there are three things that are difficult things for Christians to have to learn to love. Uh, the first thing was you got to learn to love. Uh, difficult thing that you got to learn to love uh, are your enemies. Second thing is you got to learn to love discipline. But there is, there, there's, a, there's a third thing. There is a third thing. There's a third thing. And that third thing is you got to learn to love the truth. All right, you got to learn to love the truth. Uh, we all have room here because we are living in a time when most of us do not love the truth. Mm -hmm. We do not love the truth. In fact, many of us won't even tolerate the truth. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. We don't even tolerate the truth. We don't tolerate the truth. No, no, we don't. Tolerate. That's because in my view, we refuse to believe anything from anyone that doesn't fall in line with what we perceive the truth to be. There are some young adults. There are some, uh, there are some people who are, who are Christians, who claim to be Christians, who don't believe anything unless uh, it is their way or it's, it's received in their, or it comes in that fashion. Um, yeah, we, we are constantly writing off statements and people if what they tell us challenges our personal version of reality. But it cannot be so far uh, for the Christian. Can't be so for the Christian. Why? Why, brother pastor? Can't be for the Christian. Why? Well, go to Proverbs 27. That's Old Testament, pastor. Yes. Go to Proverbs 27. 
Go to Proverbs 27 and 6 at the bottom of your screen for those of you who can see. Proverbs 27 and 6. Proverbs 27 and 6. Listen, it says, uh, faithful are the wounds of a friend, but the kisses of an enemy are excessive. Uh, this is the proverbial giving. Wounds from a friend can be trusted, but an enemy multiplies kisses. Uh, the truth, brothers and sisters, challenges us. The truth challenges us. Uh, the truth convicts us. Come on, come on. There you go. Come on, come on. I need you to chime in there. Uh, the truth will challenge you. I want to I, I want to take time. I want to take time. I've got a few more minutes. I got to run this. Um, so many times in church, we are satisfied. I think I, I talked about progression uh, the other week, how progression uh, sometimes uh, causes difficulty because it means moving from the place where we're comfortable to where we're uncomfortable. And this is where truth sets in. You have to, uh, uh, brothers and sisters, we have to have truth. Mm -hmm. Truth will challenge you to become better. And I don't know if, if you understand that. Um, truth will challenge. It will convict you. You are not where you should be. Don't accept, I said this Sunday, don't accept mediocrity. Do not accept mediocrity. Me mediocrity. Uh, yeah, that's right. That's right. That's right. Uh, yeah, that's right, Sister James. The truth will set you free. And it, not only will it set you free, it, it's the challenge, the challenge of the truth is what frees you. Mm -hmm. The challenge of the truth frees you, but it convicts you to become better. I got to go a little further. The truth will pain you. It will cause you pain. Yes, the truth will cause you pain. Um, and, 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 but we, you got to love it. You got to love it. Um, matter of fact, matter of fact, there, there's some people, there's some people, there's some people tonight. Um, you go work out, you walk, you do whatever. There's some physical therapy people on here and, uh, you've heard it before when even those of you who try to lose weight, uh, those of us who try to lose weight, let me say it that way. Cause I'm in that group. Those of us who try to lose weight, uh, no pain, no gain. That, that's right. If you're going to gain any ground on where you're trying to go, there has to be some pain to get there. The difficulty with Christians today, and I want to uh, uh, pigeonhole that into uh, African-American church um, uh, context. So many times when it comes to challenging and, and realizing your truth, uh, and, you know, that, that's a constant uh, cliche in this day and age now. Uh, live your truth, you know, uh, d d t uh, reveal your truth, take care of your truth. OK, let's take care of our truth. It ought to challenge you. It ought to convict you, but it ought to cause you pain when you find, when you deal with your truth. That truth ought to move you to a level where you cause it causes you to challenge to go challenge you to go forward. And, and, and we, we must especially love it when it comes from a friend who is closer than any brother. Matter of fact, for Jesus loves us enough to tell us the truth. Yes, he does. The Lord will tell you the truth about yourself, about God, about the world, and about your own heart. Matter of fact, we even sing it sometimes. It's uh, it's encamped, uh, encamped in a hymn. Jesus knows all about our troubles. Yes, he does. He will guide until the day is done. There's not a friend like the lowly Jesus. No, not one. If the Lord has told you and is telling you and revealing to you the truth of your life, you ought to understand that it's not there to hurt you. It's there to help you. Uh-huh. Some things are easy to love, but others are not. There's some things that we dislike even about ourselves, and that's the truth. Thank goodness that God in Christ is doing a changing work when he challenges us 
through the truth, convicts us with the truth, pains us with the truth. And one of the most apparent ways we see uh, the change is when we start to grow in these areas of truth and discipline. Stay with me on that. When you come to realization and, and when you come to that realization that the truth is what it is and it has become evident uh, to you, it has been revealed to you by the spirit of God and the unctioning of God that that is your truth, live with that truth. And it ought to cause you to challenge it and change what's going on. Because, you, you, I mean, you can't accept just being where you are. You can't accept being down. You can't accept being sick. You can't, you can't give up on things because God has given you more abundance of life. And while you have life and the breath of life, you ought to be able to go forward. Listen, when we start to truly love our enemies, when you, yeah, that's right, I said it. When we start to truly love our enemies, we are conquering ground that is challenging, but it is changing. When you're able to love a person that did not like you, openly said they hate you, don't, don't want to see you, hate your guts, walk to the other side of the street, you are doing something when you're able, uh, yeah, you, when you truly love your enemy. Not just say it, do it. Then when you love discipline, when you accept and love the discipline of God, uh, that God sends and God has for you, when God allows that to happen, when you start loving that discipline, you are being blessed. That's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. You love that discipline. Then you got to love the hard truth. That's right. Love the hard truth. Um, there are, and the reality of this loving the hard truth, again, as I'm, I'm, I'm kind of stretching it out, uh, when you, when you consider this verse, Proverbs 27 and six, uh, Proverbs 27 and six is right there on your screen. Uh, listen to it. Faithful are the wounds of a friend. Yeah. Uh, faithful are the wounds of a friend, but the kisses of an enemy are deceitful. Um, they're deceitful, uh, um, kind of like the, the, when you go in the store, sisters and, and, and the salesperson or saleswoman say, oh, that looks good on you. Knowing uh, the dress too big, too small, too tight, wrong color, all that nice stuff. They just want to get your money. When the truth comes, friend will automatically tell you, you yeah, man, may they try to uh, sugarcoat it as best as they can, but they have to take, no, that ain't right for you. No, they, you don't need that. No. Uh, yes. So the verse says, Faithful are the wounds of a friend. Yes, it's going to be faithful. Not that they're not trying to hurt you. They're trying to help you. That's right. So even more so in the church, um, we try to help people. That's right. We try to help people. Not, not just for a handout. We're trying to give uh, help out. That's right. To teach skills and skill sets and give you the ability. See, you don't get saved just because um, uh, we need another member at the church. I want you to I want you to get that real quick tonight. You're not saved just because we need another body in the building. No, you're saved because uh, there was a need you saw that you needed to have, and God through Jesus Christ was the answer to your problems. And as you got the answer to your problems through accepting Jesus as your personal savior, you became saved by believe, confessing your belief in Him, believing and accepting Him as your savior and you're saved, and then you prayed, and someone baptized you uh, in the water, but they prayed for the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and when the Spirit started working on you, it started working on the difficult areas that you have to learn to love. You got to learn how to love your enemies. You got to learn how to love discipline. You got to learn how to love the truth, and as you do so, you'll, you, then by God's grace, you are growing you got to be able to grow and not just say it because now let, let me catch this as well. You got to understand that growth continues. It does not stop. You continue to grow, whether uh, you've changed locations physically, whether you've changed locations emotionally or spiritually, uh, that it still means that you're growing and as you grow spiritually, God is allowing uh, his spirit to, uh, to grow you, to 
develop you, to uh, help you get to where you need to be uh, through loving your enemies, loving discipline, and loving the truth. And I'm thankful. I'm thankful that God is blessing me, that God is allowing me to shape, form, and to get to where I need to be in him. Because if I didn't know how to love my enemies, if I didn't know how to love the discipline he sends and didn't know how to love the truth, I'd be in bad shape. <laughs> yeah. So tonight, tonight, let me go back. These are some difficult things, three difficult things that Christians have to learn to love. Yeah, three difficult things that Christians have to learn how to love. You got to learn how to love your enemies. You got to learn how to love discipline. You got to learn how to love the truth. Thank you so very much. Thank you so very much. I, <clears throat> I pray that you've been blessed tonight. Pray this, I pray this helps you and helps somebody tonight. I pray that this will um, grow you. Because there are some people who need to grow. That's right. You need to get more mature. You you need to, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. We got to mature. We got to change. We got to change. We have to change our communities. We have to change our world. The way we do that is that we grow in grace and in the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And in growing that, and in that growth, we grow to love our enemies. We grow to love discipline and we grow to love the truth. All right. All right. All right. Thankful that you that you sat there and that you took all that in. Um, um, be sure that if you need a copy of this lesson, I'll see some typos. I got change in here. I will change it. But Sister Reese will have this. If you need to uh, call our church and request a copy, you can get one and that will be afforded to you and will given given to you. Uh, next of all, I am so excited tonight again to say uh, it's always a blessing to share with you, but I've got some things I need to share uh, in the form of announcements. I try to make this as brief as possible, but I want to make sure information goes out in the proper fashion. Uh, let me move my screens and get all my stuff together here. Um, Sunday, Sunday, this coming Sunday will be Youth Sunday. That's right. Youth Sunday is coming up. Youth Sunday is coming up. Uh, Brother Malachi Thompson will be with us as our speaker. We encourage you to come be a part of the 10 a.m. worship. That's right, 10 a.m. for the worship. 10 a.m. for worship on Sunday. Need to see you here. That's right, you need to be in place on Sunday morning. That's right, on the screen or on the scene. Thank you very much for, the, for all of you catching on to it. Our young people will be going bowling on Saturday. Thank God for bowling. Thank you, Deaconess Wilkins, for uh, and your ministry. Uh, and your uh, help us to get this together. We're going bowling on Saturday. Hope and pray that you've already turned in all of what you need to do so, RSVP by yesterday, actually. Hope that you got that in. We're going to Matthews uh, to the bowling alley there, and we pray that those who are going are going in great and wonderful shape. Thank you so very much. Hope to see you on Saturday. That's right. We're going to have an excellent time at the bowling alley. Yes, I've already put out some threats, uh, challenges for those uh, young people who will be going. Jahan is one of them. Yes, he's going to go down. Uh, there's a young man named D.K. Ferguson the second. Yes, he's going to catch it. Yes, he's going to catch them them turkeys. That's right. He's going to catch them turkeys because pastor's going to get it. That's right. Pastor's going to get it. All right. Thank you so very much. <clears throat> We're also going to be honoring our graduates on Sunday. Uh, those who are graduated from high school, those who graduated from college, those who are moving up uh, from different grades. Uh, we hope that you've turned in, turned in your work and we want to receive that and we want to honor those persons, those young people as they have progressed this year. Today was the last day of school. Oh, yes, there's some grandchildren of yours and some children who are so happy to be out of school. Oh, my Jesus, uh, you just don't know. Uh, the, the joy that some child has right now, uh, they can stay up uh, to uh, 9.15 tonight. Yes, they can stay up to 9.15. Yes, yes. No, we don't do all night at our house. We don't do all night at the Ferguson household. Praise God. Thank you, Sister Ferguson, for giving me that there. Thank you. Yeah, that's my backup. That's that's our bought that hey, that she keeps good order. See, we love discipline at, our, at the Ferguson household. Praise God. Thank you. 
Uh, but we're happy that our children have finished school. We are praying very much. All right, all right. Um, praying very much that all of our young people are doing well. We look forward to sharing with you on Saturday and Sunday, but we want to honor them on Sunday at, in the Sunday morning worship. Uh, again, Brother Malachi Thompson will be with us. We ask for your donation. That's right. Contribute to it. Uh, we're trying to put as much there so that we can uh, take care of those things that need to be taken care of for our young people on Saturday and then further them on Sunday. Thank you so very much and God bless you. Um, who else am I on? Oh, uh, that's right. Hope to see you back next week, Tuesday, Tuesday for intercessory prayer, Wednesday night for Bible study next week. And then we will have a break. Next After next Wednesday, there will be a break. We're going to take a break uh, from the 15th um, of June until the 24th. Uh, actually, to that following week, I think I want to say the end of the month, uh, we'll get back to uh, will we get back together. Let me make sure. Let me make sure because um, we will not get back together until the first of July. Let me say that tonight. For those of you on the teleconference line, the first of July, and I will be sure to have some kind of announcement together for that so that you'll be reminded. And those of you who are on um, taking some time off to recoup. Uh, to rest, to uh, re reconfigure uh, these Bible studies, get this stuff together for the summer. And possibly we're going to launch a vacation Bible school platform of some sort so that we can do vacation Bible school. And um, that's that's just what God has given me in this season. So I need time to get, a little, uh, get, to get with God to make sure all of this stuff is packaged well so that we can receive it. And I want you to be able to be, a, uh, be blessed through it and with it. Um, um, would you remember, would you remember tonight as we get ready to pray, would you remember, and I'm trying to look through my notes here, would you remember Sister Betty Wentz in your prayers? Uh, she's, had, she's had some sickness this week. Would you remember her, lift her up as well? Would you remember um, Brother Benny Thompson who has death in his family? Uh, please remember him as well. Remember Sister Sally Land, uh, Sister Julia Thompson. I saw you on here. Uh, would you remember uh, Sister Diane Staley and Brother Staley uh, in sickness in their home? <clears throat> Excuse me. And all that's going on. I want to encourage you to pray for them, uh, the, uh, the Staley's that is, and support them in any possible way that you can. Um, during this time, and I appreciate that so very well. Um, would you also remember, um, and I want to make sure I'm uh, calling the things that I need to call that I know right off. Would you also remember Deacon Garfield Evans, as well as, as Deaconess Evans, Etta Evans, uh, in all of that uh, sickness and things that are going on there, and lift them up as best as possible. <clears throat> Y'all, excuse me. Um, as you remember them and those within our church family and extended family, we're thankful for all persons and we hope and pray that you are doing well and we're going to pray for you and pray with you. All right. Would you join me in prayer? Come on, let's pray together. <clears throat> Heads bowed, eyes closed, hearts praying. God, thank you tonight. Thank you for your grace, your glory. Thank you for your goodness. You've been wonderful for us, to us, around us. Thank you, God. You've been awesome. Pray tonight, God, for the names mentioned and even those names that were not called. God, we are where we are, but we know there's power in your name. There's power in your touch. There's power in your presence, power in your spirit. We're praying tonight, God, for healing, not for sickness. No, we don't pray for sickness. We pray for healing. We don't pray for uh, we don't pray for things that are not possible. We will pray for the possibilities that your hand of power, that your hand of deliverance is on those lives and with those who are on the healing list. Praying for those who are at, at the door of change, at the door of transition. God, be with them as they make those steps to go forward. God, we're praying tonight, God, for someone to go further, to have movement in progression, to get better. 
God, we're praying for persons who even have gone to the hospital over the weekend, whether they be in our church family or not. We pray, God, that you bless them in a mighty way with healing from your hand. God, we're praying for healing in our communities, those who are committing acts of violence and killing senselessly, stealing and doing things that are violent and bad and that are cutting off life, that are destroying property and uh, dismissing so much with people. God, we pray much for them, heal them and restore them. We pray for their deliverance. We pray for the deliverance in the household of faith, persons who doubt the possibilities of what can and will happen. We just learned tonight that we need, uh, we need to accept and deal with difficult things as Christians. We need to learn how to love our enemies, love the discipline that God gives us, love the truth that God puts before us. God, help us as Christians, as followers of your way to do these things so that we might make life better. God, tonight we ask and pray a special prayer for our students who have completed school, uh, both college and grade school, those who graduated, any person that's done so, pray much for their life, their light, and their love. God, we pray for their growth as well as they mature. Help us to be good examples before them so that they would live a holy life. God, tonight we pray, God, that you do so in a wonderful way. Be with those who've lost loved ones and help them as well to be delivered, to be set free. God, we ask tonight, God, that you do these things careful in your time as you release the prisoners, both physically and spiritually, from their bounds and deliver them to a mindset and a mentality that I can be better. Release those who have been downtrodden and feel left out and feel lonely, that they are not lonely tonight. Let them know that you're there with them and that they never walk alone. God, tonight we pray, God, that you do great things in our government and in our communities to let people know that you're still in charge. Now, Lord, we thank you. We love you. We praise your holy name. It's in Jesus' precious and powerful name we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you so very much. God bless you. All right, let's see who, uh, I want to thank every person that's on real quick. Uh, thank you, Sister Chapman and family. Thank you for being on our teleconference line. Thank you, Brother Lucas and the Lucas family for being on the teleconference line and all of the connected parts. And we pray that uh, uh, there's healing in the room tonight in that family. <clears throat> Um, Sister Gray, God bless you. As young as you are, keep on being young and young at heart and God's blessings be on you. Uh, to Brother Evans and the Evans family, God bless you. Thank you for being a part tonight on our teleconference line. On our Facebook page, Sister Irwin and crew, thank you for being a part. God bless you. Uh, Sister Bennett, Brother Bennett, thank you for being so dutiful. Uh, God's blessings be on you as well. Sister Faison, thank you as well. Uh, sister and Brother Hankerson, God bless you. Deacon Wilkins, thank you always. God bless you. And then Deaconess Wilkins, uh, Sister Burris and crew, thank you. God bless you for being on tonight. Thank you. Uh, brother and Sister Jefferson, thank you for being on tonight. God bless you as well. Sister James and the James crew, God bless you. Uh, looking forward to good testimonies coming from that at that place, that household. Uh, Sister Julia Thompson and crew, God bless you. Kick, keep on kicking high. God bless you tonight. Uh, Sister uh, Drakeford and family, God bless you. Thank you so very much. God bless you. Uh, Sister Sadie Lyons, thank you for being on tonight. God bless you. Appreciate you being on and with us tonight. Sister Robert Wilson, God bless you again for being on. God bless you. Thank you. Sister Diane Staley, thank you for being with us. Brother Staley, our prayers are certainly with you and we're praying uh, for healing and recovery and restoration there. Sister Sheila Clark, God bless you tonight. Thank you for being on. God bless you. Sister Diana McRae, God bless you as well. Thank you for being on. You and your crew on on. Uh, Sister Virginia Bell, thank you for being on tonight. God bless you. Uh, Sister uh, Deborah Pearsall, thank you for being on. God bless you. Thank you for being a part tonight. Amen. Thank you. Uh, Sister Vermeer Rush, thank you for being on as well. God bless you as well. To my digital assistants at the house, uh, uh, Brother Ferguson, uh, Brother DK, thank you. 
Uh, God bless you. I'm so happy about him. I'll let, let it be known on Sunday where he's, what's going on with him. Uh, thank you for being a part and being on tonight. Uh, thank you, Sister Ferguson, for helping out. And we are so appreciative to your efforts. Thank you so very much. Uh, to all those persons on our YouTube, and let me make sure I get my YouTube up and running in the right way. All right. Thank all of our YouTubers and thank you for watching. Thank you for being a part. It's always a pleasure. Even if you don't sign in, we're thankful to have you wherever you're from. We are pleasantly pleased to have you join us on our YouTube channel. And again, let me encourage you to like, share and subscribe to our YouTube channel as well as our Facebook page. We are so thankful to have you join. Um, let me remind you, if you'd love to seed into this ministry, you can sow a seed today digitally, uh, dollar sign FMMBC Charlotte on our cash app. You can do so tonight and that will be a blessing to us and we're thankful that you do so. Thank you so very much. Thank you to our uh, extended fa church family that joins us either on the live or on the, on the recording or watches us later. Uh, Pastor uh, Dr. Robert E. Lee McGowan's uh, senior and Lady McGowan's for joining us and the Come As You Are evangelistic family. Anyone who checks us out, we're thankful that you are watching and being a part uh, but we want to encourage each person who watches, whether live or later, to sow a seed into this ministry, to continue to let it flourish because uh, you're sowing into good ground. And we want to continue to do great things for the cause of Christ and for the meaning of the gospel and for the ministry that God has given us. Thank you so very much for joining us and for sowing that seed tonight. Sow a seed so that it would flourish in this season. All right. It's been a pleasure tonight. I wish I could hang out with you all night long, but uh, some some Golden State Warriors are going to face again um, the Boston Celtics, and I want to be able to uh, dig up um, uh, dig salt in the wound of the Warriors of fans later on this evening. I'm praying for the Celtics to put put them in, uh, put put do them in again tonight. Yeah, I said it. I said it. I know Steph Curry from up here. God bless him. God bless him. But he going to get it tonight. Thank you. <laughs> All right. God bless you. Thank you. It's been a joy to share with you. I hope and pray that you've been blessed tonight and that you go through your difficult season knowing that you, you can love your enemies, love discipline, and love the truth because God is going to bless you. He's going to grow you. He's going to mature you. He's going to change you. And that's where we want to be. We want to be in the change and be the change in this time. Hey, this has been another broadcast of the First Mayfield Church, uh, otherwise known as FMMBC Charlotte. And we thank you for being a part. But do we want you to know that this, we believe here at FMMBC, that this year, 2022, is the year of breakthrough. And we're going to break through. God bless you. Have an awesome night. Take care.